Ireland is a small island off the northwest coast of continental Europe. As a result, its development historically has been conditioned very much by its ability to trade in maritime affairs. While this was historically the case, it still remains because even though air freight has increased, we still depend disproportionately upon our maritime trade. When we think of the economic takeoff in the 1960s, the Celtic Tiger economy of the 1990s, and our recent recovery from the financial crisis in 2007 and 8, all the development has been primarily due to our efficiency in promoting maritime trade. And that of course means the efficiency of our port systems because our ports are the gateways through which maritime trade flows. We are here at the port of Cork, one of Ireland's three tier one ports, the other two being Dublin and Shannon Foynes. And we will use Cork as a case study to review the evolution of the Irish port system since independence in the 1920s to the present day. Trade through the ports has obviously changed significantly over the last 100 years. The geography of the ports, the structure of the ports have all changed. And to look at these changes, we have first located ourselves at what we call the inner keys or the inner port of Cork City. Cork, like most of the major ports in Ireland, evolved initially as a river port located upstream from where the river, in this case the River Lee, exited into the sea through Cork Harbour. The development of the port and the city in most cases has been very positive. An interdependent relationship emerges between ports and their cities. So for example, when trade increases, the city prosperity increases. As the city's prosperity grows, demand for imports and exports grow. And as a result, you have this mutual interdependency between port and the city. As the city grew, so however you get problems of congestion, problems of water depth, and as a result the city moved out from its old medieval core adjacent to the city just downstream from the lowest bridging point which you can see behind me in Cork. At this point the city of Cork's port grew strongly and since the independence of the state in the 1920s this has been the principal port for the city of Cork and one of the main ports of Ireland facilitating its growth and development through to the present age. So what are the characteristics of an old inner city port which evolves through the 20th century. Here we are alongside the River Lee and classically we see the wharfs and the quaysides along which the general cargo vessels dock. And today we can see examples of such boats still using the port, albeit to a much lesser extent than in the past. And adjacent to the ships one can see the grain hopper, for example, which would offload grain into the grain silos of R&H Hall, one of the classic port-related industries which you find in such areas. Adjacent to these wharfs and quays, you have warehouses into which the imports would be stored before redistribution into Ireland and also 
items. Goods would be stored to be loaded prior to export. This would have been a hive of activity in which many cranes and large numbers of dock workers would have been working to load and offload the goods from the general cargo ships into the stores and redistribute to their market areas. What was also important, of course, in moving goods to and from the port were railway facilities, which predominated movement of goods inland until the advent of the motor car taking over in the 1960s and 70s. And proximate to the harbour, we have Cork's railway station, Kent station, and extensive railway sidings running on the north side of the quay, which would have brought goods to the port and redistributed goods to the rest of the country. In addition, we see the bonded warehouses behind me, into which special goods would have been stored under secure conditions, such as wines and spirits. And behind the bonded warehouses, we have the administrative centre of the Customs House, controlling the port of Cork. Not only did the port function as an import-export point, but also because goods were loaded and offloaded, they became optimal sites for industries wishing to assemble the raw materials and produce finished products and also to export goods. And classically in the port of Cork, we have the development of Ford, which became and was the only vehicle assembly plant in the Republic before its closure in 1984. Dunlop Chemical came here in the 1930s as a forerunner of multinational investment within the island of Ireland. And of course, finally, the people needed to work in the port, in the factories, would need to be housed in proximity to avoid journey to work. So around the, Cork, the port of Cork, we have extensive working class neighbourhoods acting in an interdependent way with the port. So in effect, up until the 1970s, what we are looking at here is a highly vibrant, interdependent uh, centre of activity in which the port, employment, transport and housing acted. This was the hub the economic heart of the city. This economic heart began to falter in the 1970s as new shipping technologies began to look for deeper water and greater space. The result was that the inner port began to suffer problems of decline. The warehouses became redundant, fewer ships docked against the wharfs, and as a result, we get a sense of dereliction, unemployment increased, the working class areas around the port fell into disuse, and this central part of the city became an economic black point, presenting a poor image of the city of Cork as it did elsewhere. We can think of Dublin as another example where the inner city docks fell into disrepair, similarly in Limerick. So for about 10 to 15 years, the image of the inner dock and the function of the inner docks faltered. By the 1980s, however, in keeping with examples from elsewhere in the world and in Europe, a new role was found for these redundant spaces. We have large tracts of unused land proximate to the city, which now found a role for the new post-industrial economy and for people wishing to locate back to the city as part of a process of gentrification and urban renewal. Following the example of Dublin, 
where we recall the Customs House Dock Schemes, the International Financial Services Center, and the regeneration and the reimagining of the inner city docks. Here in Cork, we are following suit, more slowly and less dramatically. Many of the old inner key warehouses are now used for urban functions, such as shops, fitness centers. The Customs House dock behind me will become the centerpiece of a new urban regeneration scheme which will embrace this area. Across the river, the sidings of the railways will give way to a mixed development scheme with large numbers of residential apartments and offices as the urban space extends downstream to recolonize this inner city docks. And to my right, the old grain silos and the old location of Fords and Dunlops will be converted into new housing office developments. The whole area will lose in many ways its old port function and reoccupying what was once the dynamic heart of the Port of Cork.